Hi, my name is Jane and I'm lucky enough to live and work here in Tasmania, a unique and beautiful spot of the world. Today, I'm off to pick up three Tasmanians who know nothing about one of our state's secret superpowers, hydroelectricity. So what is it and how do we make it? Let's go and find out. <laughs> It's 7.30 on a Tuesday morning here in Hobart and I'm about to pick up three Tasmanians who are in the dark about Tassie's secret superpower, green energy. So we're gonna go on a bit of an adventure and see what the next three days has in store. Hi! Hello! Hi. How so are lovely you? to meet you. Nice to meet you too, I'm Teresa. I'm Ava. Tanya. All right, are we ready for an adventure? Yes. Let's do it. Awesome. How adventurous are you guys? Well, we're here. We're here, so I think, I think we're that's very good. adventurous. Especially since I know what's in store no, for no, you. No, no. <laughs> that's why I'm hedging. <laughs> Guys, more seriously, like how much do you know about where your electricity comes from and what Tassie's role is and where our, you know, what's unique about our electricity? I know we've been called the battery of the nation. Right. Okay. I know there's some, some something under the Bass Strait maybe to supply Victoria. Yes. Okay. And, and there's things that spin around under yes. the water. And so <laughs> solar, I I wind farms. Okay, so they were great answers. Um, let's go and see if we can learn some more, hey? Awesome, awesome. Okay. Excited. let's do it. Wait. <laughs> it's like there might be a bit of a walk happening. Mm. Down for that. Mm. <laughs> little stretch of the legs. On. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well this is, I guess, where our story starts. It's water and Tassie's got a lot of water. It's the lifeblood of our communities and our ecosystems, but it's also our superpower. It's what we turn into electricity, ah. an abundant renewable energy source. Amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Should we go and find out how we turn water into electricity? Yes. yes Let's do go. We. So guys, welcome to South West Tassie. Um, right on cue, it, it did start lightly drizzling and we organised that. Thank you, we appreciate it. So on your left here, guys, is Lake Pedder. It's so beautiful, it's so big. It is, so Lake Pedder and Lake Gordon that you're about to see on your right is actually the largest uh, lake in Australia. Wow. Okay. So 26 Sydney harbours worth. Wow. So oh, much yeah. water. And I guess one of the really interesting or maybe unique characteristics is that they're what we call multi-year storage, which means that we could use it all through a summer and then it didn't rain over winter. There'd still be enough to generate energy the next wow. year. Yeah, okay. So as we're, I guess, going into a, a period of, of climate change, that becomes more and more important for us. Are these natural lakes or are they created lakes? So they're man-made. Lake Pedder is impounded by three separate dams, Edgar, Scotts Peak and Serpentine. Okay. So they dam the, the various inflows. So yeah. think the tiny stream that we saw, but on a bigger scale, and that then stores the water. 
and at the beginning of this journey you said I've heard about Battery of the Nation yes. and it's a bit of a, a kind of a catchphrase but it's really because when water is stored in a dam like this it is acting just like a battery oh, and so okay. every time we run it through the power station that's it's like you're like using the battery and then every time it rains and we capture that water it's like we're recharging the battery yeah Brown trout of up to 12 kilos. There is a pretty active fishing club on Lake Pedder and people come up and go kayaking. Swimming. Um, yes, swimming. Out onto the lakes, past some of the finest scenery in the world. So this is stop two. Yes. yes. And I told you to be excited. We are very excited. Oh, you're excited. making me so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Good nervous, so good nervous. So right on cue it started raining. Um, this area gets about three metres of rain per year. Wow. Okay. And it all wow. gets funnelled into here. Wow. That's beautiful. This is unreal. Oh my goodness, it's a long way down. <laughs> <laughs> long, long way down. <laughs> it is a long way down. So wow. Gordon Dam, Lake Gordon, it's about 26 uh, Sydney harbours yeah. worth wow. holding back. Yeah. And 140 metres to be precise, oh, down. Gosh. That's oh, beautiful. Insane. So it's raining now and that's part of the Tasmanian kind of hydropower puzzle the high rainfall. Mm. So we get about three metres in this area annually. Um, and if you think back to that stream that we visited earlier on today, um, all around us and around the lake, there's those tiny streams kind of falling down the, the steep mountainside and collecting in Lake Gordon. And then that's ready to go through the power station when we want to generate electricity. So you guys have been asking some awesome questions uh, and I think it's a good time to hand you over to a local expert who knows this dam inside out. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we need to get you to the bottom of there and we're going to do it in this. That's oh. so cool! Oh, really? <laughs> awesome. oh my goodness! Hi! Hi. Hi. We thought we were going down in a little basket, so that's no, such an improvement. No, fully enclosed, it's all good. That's so shall we go no, no, absolutely. and meet yeah. Brett? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Do you want to lead the way? Sure. Welcome to the last best ride of your life. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to leave it really? At least we have good yeah, company though, so that's right. okay. <laughs> If we're lucky, we won't go all the way to the bottom. Fast. Fast. We're on a gentle pace. So ready to go down? We're ready. We're ready. ready when you are. <laughs> okay, it's all good. It's one of Tassie's biggest dams, or the biggest one. Wow. It's 140 metres tall from yeah. the top of the dam down to the river. 18 metres thick at the bottom almost three metres thick at the top yeah. and 200 metres across the top of the dam. So from all the tiny little rivers and creeks that run around and in mm -hmm. for a, a large catchment of almost a thousand square kilometres, all end up in the Gordon River which then fills the lake. So the dam okay. is purely just the plug in the river mm -hmm. wow. and the water that's behind the dam is what drives the Gordon Power Station. How was that, ladies? So good. Yeah. Amazing. It's beautiful out there. It yeah. amazes me still. Yeah, after I bet. All this storm. <laughs> so the shape of the dam makes it super, super strong. Yeah, we can see that egg shape. Yeah. 38 years of climbing up and down the ladders and in the cart, and not once have I felt not secure. Okay. okay. Good, because yeah. it's quite intimidating knowing that yeah, that's huge. there. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> cool and it scary is. and big. <laughs> yeah. Now, would you like to know how do we make electricity out of water? We would. Yes. Yeah. We have the big Gordon Dam. The lake fills up from lots of rain. Yeah. And then the water that's in the lake falls down our intake tunnel. Oh, which is okay. About 12 metres in diameter. 12 metres. And Ooh, 137 wow. metres from the bottom of the lake down to this piece. Water then runs around 100 metres to the machines, yep. which are in the power station. Mm -hmm. Each machine needs 90,000 litres of water per second okay. oh, wow. to spin the machine, generate electricity, and then the water runs out what we call the tar race tunnel back to the Gordon River okay. down here and then off to Strawn, Macquarie Harbour. The electricity that's generated comes up the lift shaft yeah, right. through big conductors and then off to Hobart. Hang on, I've just noticed that's Rest Point Hotel is there. That's in, that's wow, a size that's huge. Yeah, yeah. That is huge. And, that, and that is to the same scale, so. Yeah, wow. Yeah, if you can imagine that's Rest massive. Point. Yeah. Our elevator is our normal access day to day. Yeah. yeah. And it's 30 flights in the elevator, all double. So it's about 65 storeys. Wow. That's incredible. Underground. That is so far down. 189 metres. Wow. Underground into the power station. Yeah. The tail race tunnel that runs out, it's 1.8 kilometres from the generators back into the Gordon That's River. huge. Mm -hmm. During the construction, which was late 60s through to 1978, yep. for the per first portion, so road, village, I think at the peak, it was just over 2,000 people living in Strathgordon. Yeah, wow. So they had school, doctors, police, the, the works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of the dam was built on a 24 hour shift, so round the clock, oh, wow. all weather. There would have been a few hundred people at this site, a couple of hundred people on each dam, at, yeah. on, on the other lake as well. Power station excavation, everything seemed to be a two or three year step. Okay. So the road in, build the village, build this dam, build the other dam. This feels like such a big vision, doesn't it, to do oh, that? It was late 50s they would have started the concept. Yeah. Wow. The old school pencil and paper. Yeah. They yeah. didn't have the That's computers right. of today, the supercomputers. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that makes it even more impressive, doesn't they it? They work this all out. Yeah. And a lot of open cabin bulldozers. Yeah. No okay. air conditioning. Yeah. The fancy stuff. Mm. Hard work. So this would power how many? Can do about a third of, of the third. state, of the yeah. state. At any given time on a normal day. So that's why we're the battery of the nation. That's right, our 52 large lakes are, are the battery essentially. The water yeah. wow. falls in the lake. If we don't need to generate, the lake keep, fills up. Yeah. Yeah. And when you need your electricity, turn the power station on, water drains away, giving us clean More green than we need. energy. So let's go and have a look at the power station. Yeah, thanks. Let's, let's do it. Let's go. If we're lucky, we'll see a cave cricket. I want to see a cave worm that eats the rock. <laughs> it's going to be awesome when you get to the viewing area and see how big the power station really is. So guys, we've seen the dam. Now we're 189 metres underground. Power station itself's 100 metres long. Oh wow, 100 metres. Wow. We're 50 metres from the floor and the power station is 30 metres wide from side to side. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Oh my goodness. Wow. Nice. That's amazing. So here we are looking into the machine hall and you can see the three generators. The blue things that are sticking up out of the top floor that's the very top of the generator. And then as you go down, so you've got the generator is the next floor. And then below the generator floor is where all the water comes in, oh, okay. spins the machines, yeah. and, wow. and generates that electricity. And depending on the day, you can go from 10 megawatts, which is not much, a few thousand houses, to 400 plus megawatts. Hold up a sec, Brett. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's take a moment to think about how much power 400 megawatts actually is. It's enough to power 10 million light bulbs instantaneously. How cool is that? All done with a little bit of water and a few turbines. And just think, 
Gordon Power Station is one of 30 hydropower stations across Tasmania, helping us keep our lights on. And that can all happen in, in a few minutes. Wow. wow. It all dependent on the market and demand. Yeah. Especially now with wind and solar in the mix. Mm -hmm. yeah. As the wind slow drops off, the hydro machines take up that yeah. loss. So it happens instantaneous. When was this built? Uh, late 60s, completed in 1978. We yeah. commissioned and had electricity flowing yeah. from one machine. So the generators, as we talked about before, they use a massive amount of water. You see the large pipes over there on the left hand side coming out of the wall. Yeah. They deliver 90 tonnes of water per second to each generator. Wow. And at, at that amount of water, it's 144 megawatts per machine, yeah. up to our 450 megawatt round figure at a full lake, flat out hundreds of thousands of houses. And once the water's gone, we've used it, it goes back to the river for the fish. You made it. We did. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. Safe journeys, ladies. Thank you so much. So you learned some stuff about how we do hydro today? We yes. did. Shall we go to Watamana and find out how we did it a hundred years ago? Yes. Awesome. In the van. Leaving Petter and Gordon, day one was a big day. Um, we ready for day two? We are ready. Awesome. Today we're going to go back in time, back to sort of where the hydro story begins really. Welcome to Watamana and I'm about to take you to the first Hydro Tasmania power station which is now operating as a museum and it's really like a, a little time capsule of Tasmania's history hidden in the heart of our state. So you're in for a treat. Fantastic. Thank you. I feel like we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. You are. <laughs> so we'll be meeting Ian. Uh, he's, the, he's the site manager and the custodian of the museum. Okay. And he will be able to tell you all of the secrets of this place. It's a beautiful building, isn't it? There he is. There he is. Hello. How are you? I'm oh, very well, guys. Welcome to Watermana. So come on in, we'll get started. This power station started here in, in Tassie uh, in 1914. Wow. And these first two turbines were built by 1916. So we, we've opened up, we're powering 300 homes, plus an electric tramway company, upwards of 2,000 personnel working on this project then. Demand for electricity in Tassie, mm -hmm. new standards of living, um, new industries coming in to use hydro, and we're looking for our new projects you know, 10 or 15 years ahead. Yeah. And of course, we went right through until about 1964. And, um, and the reason we closed down was that we built Poatina Power Station. Now, where this was a thousand foot head of water, that's a thousand foot drop between the Great Lake and here, generating about 100 odd megawatts. Poatina is a 3,000 foot drop in, in uh, height and generating 300 megawatts. So it took over. We became a museum in 1988. Mm -hmm. Been a museum now for 35 years. Oh, and it's Hydro's you know, first power station. Come on this way and we'll show you, you more. The effect of electricity on Tassie was immense. You know, we went from using wood-fired stoves mm -hmm. uh, to having electric irons. Um, mm. Basically, turning this on was, was a game changer for Tassie. From World War One, basically, we've got you know, electric irons. We're starting to import stoves for you know, mums and dads that uh, to make their life easier. Yeah. Um, electricity profoundly changed the lives of Tasmanians during the 20th century. For most Tassies. The greatest and most immediate impact of electricity was experienced in the home. Fantastic. You know, electricity was clean, convenient, mm. and saved time and hard work. 
It's incredible. Amazing. This was the first hydro that there was. Yeah, you know, I know. This it was is a, where it all started. Yeah, it's a game changer. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Knowing that there was someone in here, uh, one person per shift, every half an yeah. hour doing a log, isn't mm. that incredible as well? That is incredible. How things have changed. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Did you learn a lot? Yes. I did. So much. Terrific. All right. Shall we go? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I think um, it's amazing this place because it makes you realise just how power revolutionised life for Tasmanians. Thank you to everyone that had the foresight a hundred yes. years ago. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to end day two with a bit of a sneak peek of our third power station. So you're looking down to Taralea. It's so I guess the, the clean green energy vision that was born in Watamana yep. has now translated to 30 power stations across Tasmania. Okay. And it's put us ahead of the game. We're the only uh, state in Australia that's 100% renewable. So the penstocks in front of you, their job is to deliver a lot of water really fast mm -hmm. down to the the turbines in the power station so each pipe goes to a, a turbine down below um, there's about two olympic pools worth of water going every two minutes down oh, the wow. pipe okay. um, and does anyone want to have a guess at how fast the water travels Ooh. Couple of hundred k's. Yep, you absolutely smack wow. on. Two hundred and seventy, actually, to be precise. Wow. Yeah. So, so fast. fast water okay. yeah. hitting yeah, the wow. turbine means yeah. efficient renewable energy. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So, Jane, is there water running down here all the time? Yeah, there is. So that's one of the reasons that we're about to undertake modernisation of this particular um, station and system, um, because it's basically in. It's not. It's not well suited to how the national electricity market is operating now. Hold up. The national electricity market? Let's not do that one today. If you'd like to learn more, though, go to the link below. The market is in sort of a, I, I guess I said when we were at Watamana that having electricity to Tasmania was a, a life-changing yeah. kind of event. Mm. And we're heading into another one because more and more solar and wind are entering the market yep. and they're quite variable. Yep. And then coal is being kind of removed and yes. retired. And so the market is just undergoing this massive transformation, yep. which is amazing because, clean, you know, we're green. going towards clean, green, renewable yeah. energy. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's why we're in such a unique place because we've already been doing it yeah. for a hundred years. Yeah. So we are, smashing it. We're well ahead of the well, game. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> and tomorrow what you'll learn about is how our role will also then change. So we'll then become almost like the foundation, yeah. the piece of the puzzle that helps to firm the market. So when there's the dips in solar or there's dips in wind, we right, can come there. in with the hydro and we're reliable and we make sure yeah. that when you do switch the lights on, you get the electricity. I mean, we're kicking it out of the park, really. Yeah, well, yeah. go Tassie. Go yeah, Tassie. Go Tassie, yeah. absolutely. All right, guys, day three, another adventure away. Yeah. Uh, we've turned on some lovely weather, but uh, yeah, I reckon <laughs> yeah, after this beautiful. trip, you'll think about rain differently. It's it's opportunity and it's energy. It is. It's incredible. So we're off to Taralia Power Station, which was the station that we were looking down at last night. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yep. And what we've just passed to our right was the canal system that takes that water from Lake King William to the penstocks, ready to be pushed down through the turbines. So the canals, the penstocks, and that tunnel that we were talking about at Gordon on yes. day one. Yes. Yep. They all serve the same purpose, which is to take water from one storage and ready to be pushed through the turbines. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, Taralia, you ready? Absolutely. We're ready. Let's go. Welcome. Hi. So, we've arrived at Taralia Power Station. One of the reasons that we're here 
is to look at the water that has come through those pen stops that we were at yesterday evening, yeah. through the turbines, through the station and out. And I guess just looking at the force of that water as it's, it's hitting the river, fast, you can really it? appreciate kind of the pressure and the force yeah, of that water. Yes. Um, it smells so beautiful too. So out to the river and it's now going to flow down to the sea and pass through six power stations. Wow. Six? Yeah. Wow. So not only is hydro renewable because it's rain falling from the sky and it's replenished, it's also renewable because that same water is going to be passed through six power stations wow. and every time be power. it'll okay. generate more wow. renewable energy. That's so good. Which is brilliant. Yeah. That's fantastic. So we were talking about the future and, and what that holds. Yeah. Um, yesterday when we were at Watamana, we saw how hydro and, and the advent of hydro really transformed homes mm. um, and allowed us to kind of get you know new irons and new ovens and, and life was easier. Yeah, um, definitely. We're undergoing a similar sort of transition now. So you think about your lawnmower of 20 years ago and now it's electric. True. More and more of us are getting electric Computers. cars. Yeah. Um, and what that means on a kind of a national scale is that demand is increasing um, and demand for renewable energy is increasing. That's so good for our kids. It's great for our kids, but what it means for hydro and in particular and Tassie yep. um, is that our role will actually change a little bit. So uh, we'll become almost like the battery of Australia and we can turn hydro on very quickly when other renewable sources like wind and solar aren't, aren't able to contribute to the market because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. So yeah. we need that reliable energy source, renewable energy source to come in and fill those gaps. And just like a battery, we stand, you know, we're sort of sitting on the proverbial kitchen bench, yeah. ready to be fired up when, when we need it. So guys, three days is over. We're We've finished our adventures. <laughs> yeah, we've learned a lot. Learned a lot about hydroelectricity and how green and renewable this state is, and and what the future holds. Um, it's been amazing. It's been so much fun. Um, Exciting. Thank you. No worries. Wow, what an adventure we've had. Three days ago, I met Tanya, Teresa, and Ava who knew very little about Tassie's secret superpower, hydropower. And now look at them. We've learned how Hydro Tasmania generates clean energy and what hydropower has done for our amazing state of Tasmania. Thanks so much for coming along with us. And I really hope you've learned a thing or two as well. See you next time.